Welcome to the construction clip for the Aero Hillbilly Enterprises Sunfoil Phase 3 Magnum because solar panels have to be streamlined for highway use owing to the fact that when they're delivered they're not as aerodynamic as my left elbow. When they come out of the box they have flat square edges and they have a frame around the outside and they don't like getting hot. So if you're going to enclose it, you have to give it a way to get cold air into it. And it has to be able to blow the hot air out of the streamlined enclosure. We begin by fabricating sheet aluminium ribs and pop riveting those onto the outside of the solar panels frame. In the background here, you can see extra ribs and the false spars as well as the level of tools that you need to conduct this work. Pretty simple. These false spars form the gap for the roof rack crossbar to come up through the bottom of the skin. This picture shows holes drilled in the frame just below the glass together with a rib and the two false spars fabricated from scrap aluminium. Here we see the tip ribs and two of the ribs on the trailing edge. This is the first of the boundary layer control exit vent forms in place. So hot air will be able to come out and be blown down with a flush trailing edge vent. This view shows the blast tubes which I rolled up out of sheet aluminium inserted in the exit vent holes. Here you can see how close the blast tubes are to the laminated sheet of photovoltaic glass. After installation, the blast tubes are deformed with a hammer to just lock them in place. And all five exit vents are now in place on the trailing edge. So you've got a tip rib, two vents, form a rib, centre vent, form a rib, two more vents and a tip rib. These ribs have been formed with a recess at the top 8 millimetres. And the skin goes into that recess this is a trial fit before first having a 90 degree bend put into the skin to anchor it on top of the rib. I'm afraid this shot's slightly overexposed but it shows the rib anchoring the leading edge, uh, the trailing edge skin and it gives you an underneath perspective of it. Here's the skin installed, bent over the ribs. To be honest, I bent it on a bench and then I assembled it afterwards. And this shows the underside of the trailing edge with the five flush vents and the five blast tubes which actually blow on the underside of the trailing edge. So at highway speed, 
13.68 litres a second enters the inlets and only 8 litres a second can come out through these holes. Therefore the air inside is going to get compressed by 40% and what comes out the blast tubes is 20% faster than the slipstream and it's 20% compressed compared to the surrounding atmosphere. So these become boundary layer control vents at highway speed. When you're stationary, they're thermosiphon hot air exit slots. In this view, you can see the assembly. You can also see there's a false firewall attached to the rear frame of the panel. And to maintain the temperature gradient across the inlets, the top of the lower skin is insulated with foam styrene being fitted. And this shows the skin and the foam styrene and the hot box or plenum chamber that feeds the blast tubes. This view shows the two rear false spars in place as a test fit up against the insulating foam. In this view we have more foam in place. We have all four of the false bars attached and we have the side ribs as well as a sheet of foam. Now, just as the roof rack crossbar fits into the recess, there's a downlock which goes underneath the roof rack's fore and aft rail. And there are four of these downlocks, and these are being test fitted here just to show their construction, made out of the ubiquitous road sign aluminium with the yellow reflective side out so that day or night you've got a good visual indication that the sunfoil is in fact locked onto the roof rack and is not likely to come flying off when you take it up the road at highway speed. Foam insulation continues to be applied up past the forward spars with a gap for the air intake. It's now time to fabricate the side rails which have to fit inside the roof rack. These side rails are what the top skin is going to be riveted onto and they too have cutouts to allow for the roof rack crossbar. Those cutouts show up better in this view of the unit lying upside down on the workbench. Once you've got your tip plates installed it's then a mere matter of skinning forward from the trailing edge that you've already got in place. Now I don't do the neatest pop rivetry in the world but I do make a bit of an effort after all, I've been known to sit underneath my pop rivets and fly a mile above the family house. Both trailing rear corners done. Seen from above. And from below. And this is the side that doesn't matter how ugly it is because it's never going to be seen. So you can use lots of scrap pieces. Whereas the upper surface you have to use the best bits that you've got because that's what people are going to see. Nice and slow but it is in fact happening. Here we have a top view and this is what the underside looks like with 16 inlets facing forward as ram scoops 
and five outlets facing back as boundary layer control exit vent slots. And as I promised, the whole underside is made up of offcuts because it's all I had left from the top. Three quarter above forward edge on the left side of the screen. Slightly flatter view. Side on. Looked at from the front and above. It has a very low forward surface area. And it's actually a fairly complicated trapezoidal shape. It's a faceted aerofoil. Shown here under masking tape before receiving its silicon sealant around the top groove. More out of a sense of neatness than for any particular structural functional need. So here we have the newborn third phase sunfoil looking down on Grandpappy the Mark I. 5 watts, thick and clunky and chunky. 30 watts, smooth and slippery. One mistake I made was I initially put the solar regulator on the driver's side so that when I looked in the rear vision mirror my head was in the way and I couldn't see the thing. So one of the first things I did was move the regulator over to the passenger side where it shows up while you're driving visible in the corner of the rear vision mirror as an effective head-up display. So this is the arty farty roll showing the sun foil in the bush. These views are at the top of my driveway leading into the bare bad sheep lands which I wanted to show to advantage from a couple of directions aperture sizes and shutter speeds. I particularly wanted to highlight the upside down tree with a stone arrow hanging in it. Here we have synchronicity at the service station. When I bumped into my son on the first trip to town with the Mark III on the roof. 20 watt Mark II and 30 watt Mark III father and son sunfoils. Nice little juxtaposition with the fuel pump that the sunfoils are intended to defeat showing in the middle of the picture before coming back home. Up the driveway with a stop for photography. Told you this was the arty farty shot, don't the sheep make a mess of the place? Because it's a proper four wheel drive and I do in fact take it out into the bush, one of the design criteria was that the roof rack's forward arch should be capable of deflecting any low overhanging branches so as not to rip the leading edge off the sunfoil. I believe these photos demonstrate that it passes that particular test. And I don't think it looks too bad at all. However, when it had been on the roof for about a fortnight, it commenced to try and go flying all by itself. So it had to be tied on which was an interesting trick in itself because I had to tie the roof rack onto the car but the funny part was that this rope across the leading edge slot was able to switch off all the aerodynamic trickery because the air couldn't go around the rope and through the slot so just by being there the ropes around the roof rack and particularly the one across the slot prevented the airflow from going into the inlets which prevents the compressed air from coming out of the outlets. So there's nothing to prevent the trailing edge from stalling. And instead of a clean trailing edge, the ropes tied onto the sunfoil shaved 800 metres per litre off the distance travelled. So it might look like a clunky and strange bit of gear, but I tell you what, it's an interface artefact a solar thermal ramjet 